Praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. This is uh, your Easter service coming to you from KG Umoja. Thank you so much for joining us in this service where we want to just remind ourselves and uh, be encouraged through the Word of God. On this great event that happened during Easter many years ago, where today we remember that Jesus came and made us a new people. My sermon for this morning yes. is entitled, When Good or When Bad, Something Good Came From Something Bad. When Something Good From Something Bad. When God Turned Bad Into Good. I want us to go together to read the story of Easter as recorded by, by Luke in Luke chapter number 23 from verse number 26. Luke 23 from verse 26. I'll read all the way to the end of that chapter. The Bible says, As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you'll say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, but for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, for the sun stopped shining. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this saw, sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named J Joseph, a member of the council, who go, who, a good and upright man, who had not consented to the decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock when, in which no one had yet been laid. It was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commands. 
that is our reading for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because you are speaking to us and reminding us of the great event that happened on this Good Friday. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause us, Lord, to hear from you. Spirit of the living God, speak to us as we share from your word. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. So as I, I share this message briefly, something good from something bad. As I talk about when God turned a bad situation into good, many of us would call this day not Good Friday. Indeed, from the history books, it is said uh, it was a Black Friday. It was actually even a Dark Friday for Jesus. I want to be, believe and even to, 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 to just throw this mind, this idea to us. If you ask Jesus that day, well, how was your day? I believe Jesus will tell you I had, I had a bad day. And that is how essentially that day that was bad for Jesus became the good day that we celebrate today, Good Friday. Some have said that the original meaning or the original name for this word was God's Friday. And indeed God has been the God of every season, God of every day. And I'm reminded from since Genesis that God has been in the business of transforming bad events, bad people bad situations into good. In Genesis chapter 1, we read about how the bad situation was in uh, about the earth that was without form and without and, and there was darkness over the face of the deep. But when God intervened and said, let there be light, darkness was, was dispelled and the day became a great, great, wonderful day, the first day of God's creation because God spoke light into a bad situation and darkness was turned away. In the story of the children of Israel, all the way from Exodus into the book of Numbers, we see how bad the situation of the children of Israel was. But if we look at just even briefly at how the situation was in, in the land of captivity in Egypt, God, enter, God intervened and turned their mystery into freedom. A good land that was flowing with milk and honey was awaiting them. And so in this whole instance, we see how God has been a God who intervenes to turn bad situations, bad people, bad events into good. For indeed the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 8 that all things work together for good. Why together for good? For them that love God and them have been called according to his purpose. And so today let's think together of what could have possibly have been a bad day the day Jesus was crucified. The day, day Jesus, as we, as we say today, lost his life. The day when Jesus was put in a tomb. The day when Jesus it would have been said, even according to his own words, it is finished. Some would say even Jesus himself was finished. But that was not the end of the story. He intervened. God came in and changed this bad situation into a good story. And that's why today we can even call the day itself Good Friday. Praise the name of Jesus. And so to, tonight I want to share with us that always when people look at a situation like Good Friday, we can talk about it was the day that changed the world. The day that death we move from death to life. The day when the law, from we move from the law to grace. The day when we move from bad news, because I believe the, the entire family of even Jesus would have that day shared bad news that came to them that their son is dead. But today we are talking about good news because it is the gospel. Jesus not only died, Jesus not only was buried, but he resurrected. And that's why we are talking about Good Friday. From the cup of affliction, the cup of pain, that even asked the Father, Father, may this cup pass. But Jesus said, however, let your will be done. Jesus, as we see in the book of Hebrews, he was looking at the joy that was set before him, and he endured the cross. And that's why today I can say something good has come out of something that was bad. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. So here's Good Friday, and I want to say that even in the situation that Jesus was facing, if you read the, from Luke chapter 1, uh, Luke chapter 23 from verse 1. We are seeing that the accusations that the, the Jewish leaders, they, 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 they leveled against Jesus. They said this is a bad man. This man, there's no good, good thing in him. After all, he is a, he's not a patriotic. This fellow is all about inciting uh, people not to pay taxes to Caesar. This man is bad. This man is an opposition leader. He is even against Caesar. He is telling people that he is the king of the Jews. That was the accusations that were being leveled against Jesus and saying that this is a bad man. After all, there's nothing good can come out of 
come, come out, of a, uh, out of a bad man like this. But I also see that even God was beginning to show them the glimpses of something good that was going to come. Because even in the verdict of Pilate himself, Pilate twice told the, the crowd and told these Jewish leaders, I don't see, I find no fault in this man. He is good. I do not even neither, I, he does not deserve death as you people want him to be crucified. I see nothing good. That is my verdict. But Jesus was seeing the good that was going to come out of these events on this day of Easter Friday. And so I also look at uh, the paradox of life. The person who was supposed to be actually the bad man who deserved to be punished, that was Barabbas, was the one who was released on that day. And so this starts giving us a picture of how something good can come out of something bad. I want to ask you today, are you seeing your situation as if it is so bad? A situation where you are saying that things are, there's no more hope. There's no need for me to continue even to, to be hopeful. But I want to refer you to even the instance of Barabbas himself. He is a man who could today testify and say, Jesus died for me. If Jesus died for an for a, for a evil man, a murderer, a rebel like Barabbas, and after all, this was a real, real criminal. Jesus did not commit any crime. Today, we can celebrate the goodness of God, this good thing that is bringing out of this bad situation. A man who was supposed to die was given a new lease of life. Look at even the, 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 the instance of the criminals that were, 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 were crucified with Jesus. One of them was complaining and saying, Jesus, if you are really the son of God, let us remove us from this affliction, remove us from this place. Calm down, call your angels. May they, may they come and save us from this. But the other criminal rebuked his, 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 uh, his fellow criminal. And he actually saw a glimpse of something good that was going to come out of the bad situation he was in. He told this fellow, his fellow criminal, this is a good man. In fact, don't you even honor God? That's what he says in, in Luke, chapter, Luke chapter 23 from verse, 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 uh, verse around there, verse number uh, 40 or verse, verse 40. If I was to, to, refer, to refer to it, is in, is in verse number 40, yes. But the other criminal rebuked the one who was, who was complaining and told him, don't you fear God. So this man was seeing the possibility of something good coming out of his, their bad situation. And so my brothers and my sisters, I'm giving us this particular encouragement today on this Good Friday, that good can come out of bad. Remember the places where you have been. Remember some bad things that have happened to you. Today, can you look back and see how, were it not for God, that situation would have destroyed you. But today, God has made this situation to become the stepping stone for even this criminal who Jesus assured, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Today, Jehovah God, he is in heaven. He is in control. He is the one seated on the throne. He is in control over every situation. And today, that bad situation that you seem to be passing through, it seems as if uh, everything, the odds are against you. But I want to remind us, I want to, to, to just encourage us through the word of God that Jesus looked at the situation that he was in, as bad as it was, but he looked at beyond three days from there that something good was going to come out. And so I have some five reasons why this is supposed to be a good day. This is supposed to be the good Friday supposed to be. Number one is because someone who is innocent died for the guilty. Jesus, the innocent one, the good one, he died for us who are bad, who are guilty as charged because you are sinners, because you had fallen short of the glory of God. But today the good news is that the innocent has died instead of the guilty people. That's why it is Good Friday. Because, number two, God is good. He cannot allow anything bad to us to happen to us. Not willingly. Sometimes he allows situations to come to us as if they are bad. They seem as if they are bad. But in the whole economy of God, God is seeing the very end from that beginning, which to us seems as if it is not going to come an end. And so I want to ask us, my brothers and sisters, be, be glad that the relationship that was lost between us and God, was restored because of the good thing that Jesus did on the cross. After all, he said, it is finished. There's no more enmity. God, who is good in character, seeks the good of all mankind. The goodness of song. Somebody has, sing, has sung a song, a, song like, a song like that. In the goodness of God, all my life you've been faithful. And God today is reminding us that he is good. And that's why we can celebrate a good day, a good Friday like this. Number three is that, we can call this day good because it is a demonstration of the love of God. 
John chapter 3 verse 16 to 17, for God so loved the world. He gave us an opportunity to change our story which was so bad, which was so hopeless. And God, because of his goodness, he demonstrated this and told and uh, enabled us to escape from the wrath that was coming. Jesus took away all our guilt. He made us his, his, his friends. He no longer calls us his servants, but he calls us his friends. And today we are justified because we have received the pardon that has come because of what Jesus did, just like the criminal that died on the cross on that day, on Easter weekend. Number three is, it is good. The story is good. This is good because we have received holistic healing. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53, which I may not be able to read, but you can read for yourself. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse uh, 3 to 5, the Bible talks about Jesus was pierced for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The punishment of God, the chastisement of God was upon him. Why? Because he that was the bad thing that could have ever happened to a person that was guilty, just as you and me were. But Jesus came and uh, received that punishment on our, in our place, so that instead, with that physical suffering, with the wounds that he suffered, we may, be, we may get complete healing. We may also get emotional peace, because remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says, he prayed for us until he sweat the, the blood, he sweat the, the what you call hematidrosis. The blood, his, 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 his sweat was like that of blood that was oozing. He took away our shame. And today Jesus is giving to us a good ending because he is seeing the best that can be able to come out of even this bad situation. Number four is that we in, in this Good Friday, we received the rich inheritance from God. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, Jesus became poor so that you may become rich. He who was for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross because he saw the inheritance. He saw the number of people that would receive this salvation. He endured the cross so that he became poor for me and for you to receive the rich inheritance of God. Another thing is that we have received acceptance in God's family. Today, we have a new name. Today, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In the book of uh, First. Peter chapter 2 verse 9, he calls us a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, to God himself, because God is good. He gives us good things. He enables us to see the situation turn around from good, from bad to good. We can sing the new song with the redeemed, which is sung in heaven, because today God has given to us a new lease of life. He has turned around our bad situation into good, turned it around and given to us a new song that we can sing. Today I want us to finish this message by also referring to what Paul explains in the book of Romans chapter number 5 from verse 6 up to 10. I invite us to read together Romans chapter 5 verse 6 up to 10. This is what Paul writes when he remembers or when the Holy Spirit inspires him to write the things or to explain to us what transactions happened when bad was still being turned into good. Romans chapter 5 from verse 5 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible says you see he is telling us inviting us to see what happened just at the right time that was the right time this good friday was the right time when you are still sinners and still powerless Christ died for the ungodly we were ungodly we were not good very rarely will anyone die for the righteous man that is a rare thing Though for a good man, someone might possibly die. And we were not good either. We were not righteous. But in verse 8, he says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I thank God for that. We were still sinners. But God saw something good in our bad situation. And he came and intervened. Number 9, the Bible says, Since we have now been justified, it's as if we, do not, we are no longer bad as it were. By his blood, the justification has come through his blood. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Brothers and sisters, my dear friends, today God is giving us an assurance. We have his life. We have justification. We have the forgiveness of our sins. Our names are written in the book of life. God is still good. God has demonstrated his love for us. God has provided complete and holistic healing for us. We have received an inheritance. I want to invite us this Good Friday. 
Don't be out there and think like things are too bad. God can then change that bad situation today. I know some situations in our economy are bad. I know some situations in our families are bad. I know some situations in our relationships are bad. But take it to Jesus. Let us allow God, let us allow Jesus to come into these situations. He is able to turn them around for good in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with us that Lord, the Lord God will just grant us the grace to turn all these issues to him because it's a God who is able, a God who is all powerful, a God who's, who, whose hand is not too short to save, a God who is, not, who is powerful enough to bring that bad situation, returning it and even bad people to make them become good people in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you. Today you have reminded us that good Friday did not come in an easy way. And so I pray in the name of Jesus for my listeners and for my brothers and myself, Lord, that Jehovah God will help us, even God, to turn around our situations to you. Even us ourselves who have been called bad, Lord, you still have a purpose for us. You still have a plan for us. Your plans are for good and not for evil, to bring us to an expected end according to your word. Father, so do it. Follow up your word because your God is faithful. Thank you, Lord, for granting us this day another opportunity to hear from you. This is our humble prayer, and may you answer it because we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. God bless you.